Okay, so I've got quite a bit more done tonight. I've got my, all of my filter caps in place. I've got the, this is the A1. Uh, this is the ground it connects to. This is my center tap that also connects to the, you know, center tap from the uh, main power comes into there. The other hand, the other, either side of it comes into the, the um, rectifier here. Um, I've got my two 1.5K that come after between that and the next stage, which also has the 20K in line. These, these are in line, sorry, this is in between ground. Then those they go to ground, but then from there also we connect and I'm coming and bringing this as, as best I can down below uh, the red line. You probably can't see that from this side, but it's basically running along this edge here. And then it comes up a little bit here before we get to our pots and stuff under the board, right along the same underneath where the power line is. And then I bring it up over here and I'm not sure if that, you can kind of see that red coming up right there, I think. Anyway, um, maybe I'll just tilt this a little bit forward. All right, so right here is that red one. You can see it coming under, comes out over here, and then comes across off that way, like I was saying. I'll come back in a minute. But I've got the, this is then the, this the, that was A and B over here. This is C and this is D. I've also connected my first one over here. I decided to do this first input jack here instead for the mic, and then these two will be the instrument because I'll use them more. And I've run the instrument jacks to gather each of their 100k resistor off and then over to here into the second volume pot. I'll also then eventually the output of this guy will come down if I remember right to this cap and then down and then off of that over to this volume pot. And uh, you know and then we'll uh, there's another part of the stage that comes over to the tremble. So anyway we're gonna get more done uh, tomorrow but I literally have everything else. I've got the power wire coming in grounded. I've got this grounding bus also grounded to that same post. And then I have, uh, you know, all of the grounding points are coming to this, basically, this point. Of course, you do have the input jacks are grounded here as well. But, uh, yeah. So, I will need to tie the, this ground from this, this ground line from here off over to this guy as well. And then I also need to ground this section from here over to this guy as well. But uh, we'll get there. Getting much closer. Another night, another chunk of work done. So, we'll uh, we'll keep you guys posted as, as it comes along. Woohoo! All right, everybody, look at this. I am done. Uh, I don't have time tonight to just do like a sanity check. I will do that tomorrow night or the next, but uh, yet another night of hard work and I've got her all done. So a few things you can see, the output and the center tap, or the output transformer primary and center tap and power are all linking here to A, coming across. Uh, these are going into the, um, obviously into the outputs. And then this is the center tap, goes to here, and then over to there, or sorry, the, yeah, that's the power from the, the center tap, or well, whatever, for the grids here. Um, I've got the, for right now, I've got the two and the four ohms just tapped, or cut off, not to cut, but uh, you know, shrink wrap, so they can't, uh, heat shrink tube, that's the word I'm trying to think of, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then that comes up over here, and into my output. I've got heater, uh, I've got power and everything, and the, the, again, as I've mentioned, in the big prim preliminary videos, these are single triodes. So this is one triode, this is one, this is one. Instead of with a 12x7, you'd have half and half. I don't have that here. But uh, also on top of that, this is my phase inverter. It's wired, and then I've got my two power tubes and my rectifier. I'm starting to wonder, it would be a very easy fix, but I'm starting to wonder if I might not have done better to have this be the second power tube and the rectifier here, because now I've got quite a bit of audio cabling going right underneath the input 120 volts. I did use uh, on every major, other than just these two that are coming off the board to these, on every other major connection from an input source to a um, the next hop or from a from somewhere to a grid input, I used coaxial cable. So that's going to keep it a lot cleaner. And additionally, coming from out of the main output stages over into the input of the these 6L6s, the the power tubes, I've done the same. So I've got a lot better chance at keeping it free of any noise like that with these as well um, and the, the kind of nice thing was I was able to kind of stick these ones down right in there and then kind of joining all of these three together with their ground down to the ground point here and then the ground comes off here as well so I've got my grounding bus it's a nice hard thicker 17 gauge wire that I've uh, uh, used for this kind of stuff in the past that I really like uh, it's just a spool of uh, electric fence wire but it's thick gauge so it's easy to really bend and have stability on it like I can't get that to bend and move but it's also great for ground because it can run a very large amount of current I've got that tapped in right here at the transformer as well as my mains so we're all coming to a single point right here um, of course you know the 
the one thing I can't call it a single point because my inputs are all grounded as well as the speaker ground to the chassis, but you know, the bulk of the current of anything that is gonna go through is gonna go through this guy down to here. So uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna go back through, like I said, and double check everything. Uh, one of the things that's a nice way to do that is to print out your layout, get a magic marker and just mark off and say, okay, I've got this ground wire marked off. I've got these two uh, components here, they are the right ones marked off. I've got this ground here coming over and I can, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. I can see it coming over and coming in here, you know, etc. So you just mark off every single one and make sure that they're going everywhere they're supposed to go. And once you can confirm you've got all of those and every component is in the right place, then you're good to go. Then I will plug this into my Variac uh, and then bring up the, the, the uh, voltages slowly, monitoring and making sure things look okay. You know, I can set my ground clip on the chassis and then set, uh, um, probe carefully like here and here to check on my A and B points. Uh, and check again as I kind of, once they come in here, I'll see where that's that, and then see it again here at the C point, and then here at the D point as well, just to see where those are at. So, um, you know, I can I can definitely see how my voltages are looking as I bring it up. And I'll bring up, say, maybe 30 volts, see what it looks like, 40 volts, etc. And if all of this is looking good on the Variac, then I'll shut it back off, plug in some tubes, uh, I'll put it into my, I have a current limiting bulb, and flip it on and see what happens. So, you know, it's, it's in, in, in uh, the final stages now. It's always that first kind of power-up that's a bit nervous and we'll, or nerve-wracking, but we'll uh, let you guys watch it with me as I do it, so. Okay, hello and welcome, everybody. So, to start off today, uh, I, as I mentioned in the last little clip, I am done. I did notice, though, that I had forgotten to put my 100-ohm resistors to ground on the heater line. So we'll pull this over here for a second, hopefully you can see that. Right here, now I've got two 100-ohm, one on either side of this line, down to a ground here. That is a nice requirement for a non-center tapped uh, heater line, so that you can cancel all hum. But uh, effectively, uh, there we go, that's one of the things I'd forgotten about. Um, and that one wouldn't have been a major problem, other than I'd have had a lot of hum and wondered why, and now I have that resolved. So, anyway, we'll come back over here, and if we look, um, what I'm going to do today, really quickly, and I won't go through the whole thing here, but I'll show you when I'm complete, is I've taken a printout, and I hope that's a little focused, if not you can grab it, I've taken a printout of the layout, and I'm going to go through and physically check, does this wire exist? Yes, then I will take a little highlighter, and I will mark it off. So, you know, as a quick check, we can say, okay, so this is the that point here. There's a nice line I can see coming over where it's supposed to go to the first tube on pin number two. That's pin number one, or I'm sorry, pin number three, you can see here three. So pin number one, two, three, yep, sure enough, it's there. So then I would basically take this highlighter and mark that line as being good. What you do is if you go through and make sure everything is where it's supposed to be, you then can be con sure that you've actually gotten everything done correctly. So I'm going to go through that process now, and it's a great troubleshooting technique to ensure that you know that you have completed assembly of the board the way it, the way it was laid out. So after I get done doing that, I'll show you my nice pink board, and or pink here, and we'll go from there. All right, that process is complete. As you can see, I've highlighted everything, followed everything through, and I can see on here that everything is in place. So, next step is gonna be for me to power this on through the Variac at low volume, or low volume, low voltage. Kind of slowly bring it up. Um, I'm not gonna put any tubes in yet, which means since there's no rectifier, nothing will go past the rectifier to power the rest. But at least that way I can make sure that my primary wiring, the, the heaters should still get some voltage inside of the primary wiring should work and, and then if that looks okay and I'm not seeing any sparking or smoking once I get up to full voltage then I will bring it back down and I will hook up just the rectifier tube uh, and bring it back up and then I will check voltages everywhere and if that then looks good then I will also put the rest of the tubes in and bring it on. So at this point I'm going to very quickly uh, hook it up to the Variac and get ready for that first step so I'll be back in just a second. <laughs> 